So uh, we'll bring in the the public in uh, right now. Um, nothing to add to the agenda. Okay, we'll approve this one. Any declarations of conflict of interest? Seeing none, we'll move to our public briefing with uh, Minister Cochran on uh, Municipal Community Affairs, Grand Ambulance and Highway Rescue Services, followed by 911 Services. And uh, committee, there will be a motion to go in camera um, after the, the public presentation. So if there are any questions uh, of, uh, of, a, of more detail, we'll ask them in camera afterwards. Okay, um, I would like to uh, welcome everyone who's here with us today, uh, including media and members of the public. I know it's an early meeting, uh, but we are on a tight schedule this week, so we, we take whatever whatever time we can get. Uh, I'd like to ask um, committee members to introduce themselves for the record, starting with Mr. Simpson. Good morning. Thank you for uh, being here. RJ Simpson, MLA Hay River North. Uh, Kevin O'Reilly, Free Mike. <coughs> Good morning, Michael Navi, MLA for Ditchell. Good morning, Danny McNeely, Sawtoo Region. Uh, good morning, welcome, Shane Thompson, Andy. Good morning, welcome, uh, Herb Neckermack from Neckboot. Oh. Good morning and welcome again, uh, Shane Thompson, Nahindi. Thank you, and I'm Kieran Testart, uh, a member for Cam Lake and chair of the Standing Committee on Government Operations. Um, Minister Cochran, I'll ask you to uh, introduce yourself and your staff for the record and uh, proceed with any opening comments, please. Okay. Um, with me today from MACA is Eleanor Young, who's the Deputy Minister, and Kevin Brzezinski, who's the Director of Public Safety, Gary Sharadi, the Director of Corporate Affairs, and my Minister, Stereo Special Advisor, Shelley Martin. So I'm here today to discuss our work related to ground ambulance, highway and remote medical services, rescue services, and 911 imp implementation. In your briefing materials are two presentations. The first topic is ground ambulance, highway, and remote medical rescue services. During the 17th Legislative Assembly, the Departments of Justice, Transportation, Health and Social Services, and MACA approved a strategy to support and strengthen community-based ground ambulance, highway, and remote medical rescue services. Progress was achieved in a number of areas, including an invest in investment of $1.8 million to help communities build capacity and purchase equipment. As well, major improvements has been, have been made to procedures involving remote medical rescue. Early during the 18th Legislative Assembly, some tough decisions were necessary to help the GNWT manage expenses and respond to new priorities. As with ground ambulance and highway rescue, community fire protection and civil em emergencies have become topics of considerable interest. As we saw in 2014, climate change is resulting in hazards not seen before and a changing regulatory environment is posing considerable challenges to communities who struggle to provide fire protection. Communities need to be capable and well prepared, which are municipal community um, MACA's new priorities. As we all know, financial resources are limited and hard decisions are necessary to ensure we achieve maxim maximum value from available resources. This discussion today is intended to provide community mem or committee members an overview of the current operating environment with an emphasis on recent progress to strengthen the NWT's ambulance and rescue system. Collectively, stakeholders have made some real improvements in key areas, which allows us to focus for the time being on other important public safety topics. Ms. Young will now provide a presentation, and I welcome your comments and input afterwards. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, um, Madam Minister, and uh, I'd also like to uh, introduce our, our committee staff, Kaylee Thomas and April Taylor. And now we'll go to Ms. Young. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, so we'll go through the first presentation on ground ambulance. Um, I believe the presentation has been pr provided to everyone ahead of time. I won't read the presentation, but we'll speak to the slides that you have in front of you. 
So first off, thank you very much for the opportunity to update committee on recent efforts to support and strengthen NWT's ground ambulance highway and remote medical rescue system. Included with your materials is a backgrounder, which provides some detail on the current ambulance and rescue system in the NWT. It describes progress in supporting community-based services, and it discusses some of the challenges we face in the NWT in contemplating future strategic direction in this area. Ultimately, the discussion today is intended to provide committee with a, basic, a basis for the GNWT's current position and direction on this topic. As you know, ground ambulance and highway rescue funding was cut in half this past year, and our current 17-18 budget proposes a further reduction in this uh, grant program. Although the decision for this reduction was far from easy, the policy basis was relatively simple. Funding spent over the last nine years, along with new training and tools, has resulted in good efficiency and readiness for communities. The 18th Assembly is faced with a difficult task of reducing spending and has identified additional public safety priorities we must now shift our attention and available resources to. Community fire protection and civil emergency response and the legislation associated with those two functional areas have become our focus and available capacity and resources are being used to improve in these areas until we reach good efficiency and readiness in those areas as well. The following slides will describe the current system along with the progress that we've made to support and strengthen it. I'll end with a brief description of the challenges we face should we decide to re-examine our current public safety priorities. So the next slide uh, speaks to definitions and gives you a brief description of the three primary elements which uh, we've defined as comprising an ambulance and rescue system or service in the NWT. <coughs> the recent efforts have been focused on community-based services for ground ambulance and highway rescue. These are activities which function together for highway accidents. Ambulance services also operate within municipal boundaries as well. Remote medical rescue is a little bit different and was added to the discussion later due to incidents involving a lack of proper, proper medical expertise on scene uh, in, in more remote areas. And we'll talk a little bit more about remote medical rescue later in the presentation. Slide four speaks to a number of the stakeholders that are involved in the process um, that have either had invo direct involvement or an interest in the subject. As you'll see, there's no single GNWT department or entity that has full responsibility for ground ambulance and highway rescue throughout the NWT. And it's been through collective efforts uh, of all of these agencies that the strength of the current system lies. Work over the past several years has been a collective effort between both levels of government and the first response service providers. As a whole, the system is largely ad hoc but at the municipal level, services are generally high or highly organized and well coordinated. Next slide. The legislative framework further illustrates the basic construct for our current system. Again, no single entity holds the mandated authority or responsibly, responsibility to deliver the service. Those choosing to enter the field and deliver services are guided by worker safety, licensing regulations which require that certain qualifications and procedures be established and followed. Individuals may even be protected when rendering emergency, emergency medical aid. In 2013 and as recently as last week, the idea of using the, using the Fire Prevention Act to assign responsibility for ground ambulance and highway rescue services was raised. Consistent with the department's 2013 response, the Fire Prevention Act isn't in our minds a suitable instrument to which uh, ground ambulance or highway rescue should be uh, managed. The Fire Prevention Act's purpose is to regulate the investigation and reporting of fire hazards and to adopt codes and standards related to fire prevention. No other jurisdiction in Canada, based on our research, uses their fire protection legislation for this purpose because the broad policy objectives are so, uh, so different. Slide six on previous initiatives. Uh, gives you a little bit of some of the, the history that led us to, to today's uh, uh, environment. Uh, during the 16th Assembly, we completed a study uh, which recommended some high-level direction for the, that the GNWT might consider in addressing the various challenges around the ground ambulance highway rescue system. Uh, among the options, there were minor enhance enhancements, alluding to a funding framework, increased accountability, and reporting to enhance and strengthen the available quantum of reliable data. 
Ambulance legislation would also assign responsibility for service provision and identify training and certification levels for ambulance attendants and standards for vehicles and equipment to be used as ambulances. Increased government involvement would in involve the GNWT assuming a sole responsibility and entering the field and running the system uh, similar to what they have in Alberta, the Yukon, either publicly or privately. Given the final, fine, sorry, fiscal climate of the day and the significant work that was ongoing in the New Deal for community governments back around 2004 to 2007, the GNWT committed only to exploring legislation and making minor enhancements at that point in time. So moving on to slide seven, that meant that between 2006 and 2010, um, most of the work with our stakeholders occurred and, and contributions started to flow to communities for equipment and training. That was where MACA's focus was in the program. We did work with health and social services and eventually concluded that the territorial system just would not be financially viable or, or cost effective uh, in, in the environment at the time. By contrast, annual operating costs uh, in the 2014-15 uh, fiscal year for Yukon's ambulance services were approximately $9 million. Those unfamiliar with their service, they have a territorial service established to provide emergency transportation, including highway, ground and air ambulance. In Whitehorse, they have an ambulance station that's staffed 24 hours a day. And in rural communities, service is provided by on-call volunteer workers. They do have two full-time primary care paramedics in Dawson City and Watson Lake. The Yukon government provides all aspects of the system, including vehicles, equipment, and training to the volunteers that operate in the communities. With the decision that was made to uh, stop advancement of our work um, with the, the funding cuts, um, at that point in time, the plan was that our grand ambulance funding would uh, be sunsetted in 2012. That was the original plan when the, the program was initiated. Oh, after some after some debate during budget deliberations, uh, not only were we asked to put the 200,000 grant program that we had at the time back into the system, but we were also asked to make that permanent and increase the budget to 400,000 in 2014. <coughs> Slide eight, with that funding becoming permanent and a renewed interest in the topic around the tables, uh, along with a new challenge involving remote medical rescue, which is when that came to be part of the scope of the exercise. Uh, we created a ground ambulance, highway and remote medical rescue advisory committee. Uh, MACA chaired the committee and the committee included health and social services, the Department of Justice and the Department of Transportation. The committee was mandated to implement a strategy and support and strengthen community-based ground ambulance, highway, and medical remote rescue services in the NWT. Early consensus was reached that a GNWT-administered regime was still not achievable or a strategic objective for the group, and the standing committee of the day did not disagree. They felt maximum value would be achieved via ongoing financial support and improved tools. So that brings us to today's environment on, environment on slide nine. Uh, our current system, as you can see by the slide, we have quite a number of communities that administer services, uh, some of which extend beyond their municipal boundaries. In the past several years, additional capacity has also um, resulted with improved coverage in the North Slave and in Inuvik regions. Many of these communities have been delivering services for quite an extended period of time and some of them have some very impressive response capabilities as a result. In almost all cases, uh, cost recovery is possible through a fee, a fee schedule established by a bylaw, although we do know that there are challenges with that as, as has been demonstrated by some of our stakeholders. With remote medical rescue, as noted on slide 10, uh, there has been some great work in this area completed recently to improve the remote medical rescue regime. Uh, previously, the RCMP were largely on their own to respond to events uh, out uh, in the hinterland. Med response has assumed an integral role to ensure timely assessment and deployment of medical aid to remote locations more recently, and that was an announcement, I believe, last year through the Department of Health. 
On slide 11, we note that in the past year, the partners have uh, also worked together to replace what used to be called the Highway Emergency Alerting Protocol, or HEAP as it was called. And the purpose of that protocol was to help ensure good coordination among all of the different agencies that may be involved in responding to highway accidents and accident events. Not only did this um, effort result in validated protocols, but it now also has a web-based information system about highway accident locations, road conditions, an asset inventory of who has services and equipment available, and contact information for the agencies that may be able to support a response. In slide 12, we talk a little bit about the funding. Uh, in, in, in addition to the 1.8 that's been flowed uh, since 2007 to communities, a number of other funding sources are available to communities to continue to sustain a community-based service. All of you are familiar with MACUS funding streams that we provide annually to communities. As mentioned earlier, cost recovery is also a big part of sustaining an effective service. Um, through the uh, legislation, there is bylaw making authority for community governments to establish fee services based on the actual cost of delivering a service and communities can decide how they wish to uh, set that charge, uh, charge system up on an average call volume. For communities with lower volumes, obviously we would expect higher user charges to be a result of that. Slide 13 speaks a little bit about the training efforts that we've had. Um, you all know that we provide firefighter training to community government fire departments and we have been doing that for a number of years. This has now been aug augmented with medical first responder training. Uh, first responder training provides recipients with basic or advanced skills in first aid, CPR, the kinds of things that would be uh, required for initial assessment uh, and, and those kinds of things for community-based ambulance and rescue response and for emergencies that occur on NWT highways. This is delivered through a partnership with the Department of Transportation. Volunteers are also a critical component to this system. Uh, recently, we were able to achieve some good value with the development of a web-based volunteer recruitment and retention toolkit. Uh, initially developed for fire chiefs, but the material was developed in collaboration with stakeholders and overall its aim is to help find and retain volunteers much easier so it is applicable to the ground ambulance sector as well. With ambulance and rescue services typical of a community fire protection service, the toolkit's been marketed for firefighters and ambulance rescue personnel alike. Our aim for the future is to periodically revisit, revisit these materials and continue to work with stakeholders to ensure that we're offering maximum guidance in, in this area to ensure that they do have adequate uh, personnel for the system in the community. There's no question, however, that voluntary, uh, volunteer recruitment is a large challenge and not only for ambulance and rescue, for many municipal services and activities. And we know that the sports sector in communities is largely reliant on volunteers. So it is always a, a challenge to keep an adequate number of volunteers in, in the, the systems. In addition, as noted on slide 15, we've worked with the Department of Transportation, identifying that road safety information is another large interest uh, in the whole ground ambulance uh, area. Fortunately, the Department of Transportation, in collaboration with their federal counterparts, were able to exploit some of the great work completed, completed at the federal level, and they've implemented a safe travel strategy. Uh, will all, any of us who've been on the roads have noted that uh, there's safe travel messages propagated in one form or another all the way along the highway system, and partners are continuing to look for additional opportunities to improve awareness. In the future, uh, we've also got the NWT Territorial Public Alerting System that will further strengthen that ability to alert residents about any potential risks or dangers on the system. Finally, as noted uh, when we started, there do remain a number of, of challenges in the, the whole area of ground ambulance highway rescue that exist and they're part of our consideration in whatever uh, choices we make moving forward. We brought this material forward to help ensure a good understanding that no matter what level of support we provide, there are still challenges that we will continue to face. The previous direction in supporting community-based services has generated good results. Uh, but if, if at some point we decide that we need to make this uh, strategic priority again, 
There are issues that must lie at the heart of our discussion in discussing that future direction. We've listed some of them there in terms of limited communications networks, low call volumes in some of our communities, technical support, volunteer levels, and just our own competing priorities in terms of what, uh, where we sustain our efforts for, for supporting community governments. Thank you for your time on this presentation. As noted, we can take questions now or we can leave those till later if you prefer. Thank you, Ms. Young. We'll, take, we'll allow the committee to ask questions now. Mr. Simpson. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to clarify the last comment. You said if the department decides to make this a strategic priority again, meaning highway rescue services, ground ambulance is not a priority for MACA. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Simpson. Um, Minister Cochran. Um, yes, I would say that uh, highway rescue is a priority for MACA. However, we do have to, um, other serious <coughs> legislations that are on the uh, table for this session, and so the um, Western Lotteries funding so that we can administer the sports uh, funding. We've got the fire rescue, which is, and then the uh, emergency preparedness. So those two are public safety, and for me, public sa safety is number one. So this is a priority. However, we are in the process of pushing those legislations forward first. Thank you, Madam Minister. Mr. Simpson. Uh, nothing further right now. I'll let other members ask. Mr. Simpson, Mr. Thompson. Uh, thank you. Um, Minister Cochran, you talked about public safety. Isn't highways public safety? I, I'm, I'm trying to understand the concept is that, to me, these highways